Some days ago I logged into shift.ms, just out of habit. It was already quite late and I didn't feel like going to bed just yet. But then I noticed a new DM. I opened it. It was a message by someone called Melissa, a complete stranger. I never talked to her before. But she told me that she came across one of my videos and then binged my art and basically just wanted to thank me for what I'm doing. Thank me for giving our invisible illness a face, which by the way means the world to me. But then she told me something that got me thinking. She said she recently had a flare up, a bad one. And now she's in a downward spiral, struggling with anxiety and panic attacks. And she was wondering if I ever painted that. I at first said yes. I visualized anxiety. I mean, I did. But she made me remember my last summer, right after I received my diagnosis. She made me remember the inexplicable feelings I felt. She made me remember recovering from a really bad flare-up and at the same time having to handle this diagnosis. Being told that I'll have to live with a chronic illness from now on. Being told that this is it. This is my new normal and I'll never truly recover. Melissa reminded me of all of this. And I realized, no, I never painted that. I was overflowing with ideas. Many small ideas, but I wanted to put all of this in one face. This overwhelming realization. Uh, not even realization, not being able to understand the extent of this. That was the overwhelming part. This feeling of crashing. Everything I knew and felt and lived was over. It was in the past from now on. This was a new beginning and every day was unpredictable. My doctors told me to just live in the moment from now on. But someone who has been stressing about her future all her life, constantly worried about everything, overthinking every possibility that might occur if I do this or that, someone like this won't just snap and now be a totally relaxed person. But my doctors just shrugged their shoulders and sent me home. I was alone with this. No one around me truly understood what was going on, and I wasn't either. But my brain was in constant stress. And for the first time in my life, I felt real anxiety. My thoughts were racing, and when I truly listened, I realized there was nothing at all. I felt like I was in hyperspeed and everything around me slowed down. Hours felt like days, and with every minute that passed, I felt worse. I was just hanging on by a thread. Back then I literally thought I was losing my mind. These first many weeks after I got my diagnosis were the darkest of my whole life. Being told that your got MS is serial. And even now, around nine months post-diagnosis, it still is. The thought of being ill for the rest of my life is incomprehensible. And I think besides of the fact that I was recovering from a really severe flare-up, this diagnosis was what made me lose my mind and have panic attacks and thinking about ending it all. Well, now how do you paint that? <laughs> like all of that? How do you paint a feeling of surreality? Well, with surrealism. So I painted something more abstract than anything I ever did before for the series. I painted what it's like when you're just hanging on by a thread, constantly on the edge of ultimately losing your mind. The feeling of going mad and you're just standing there watching yourself falling apart and you don't know what to do about it. And every day you wake up and the world is a little darker and colder and existing gets harder and is less appealing with every day that passes. For many weeks I felt a way I never felt before. I wasn't myself, not even close. And I hope I'll never have to feel like this again because I'm not sure I would survive that another time. So, Melissa, this one's for you. And even though I hated being reminded of this, I want to thank you for inspiring me to paint Iris. 
my personification of a feeling of surreality, of losing my mind and falling apart because of a mess. I'll see you next week. Take care.